Hello guys, welcome to another video. Um, I've already one of my I don't think it was the first video, but one of the first videos I've made was about the Cadence Blocks uh, default settings, sort of, a, I called it a default settings a hack, because a lot of people don't know about it, but if you set it up, uh, it saves you a lot of time if you then have to uh, design a site, and you can do the same thing, this video will have is a nice addition to the previous one, because in this one I will show you how you best set up your uh, website using the cadence theme not the cadence blocks but now the default settings of the cadence theme if you set these up first this will also save you a lot of time later on and it will make the uh, process of making your website a lot more enjoyable and it will be more consistent across all pages um, because you just have to set it up once and every page will inherit the same settings by default. And then if you want to make an exception, it's easier to just adjust one page than to have manually adjust all pages to try to make them look the same. So first make sure you have Cadence Team installed and then we'll go to the customizer. Uh, this is where we have to do all uh, our edits. Let me open up a page here. This is just one I've imported from the Cadence library. So this is one that I didn't design. I just imported it from the starter templates. And I will show you why setting it up with the customizer is so um, essential. Because if I have a couple of pages already, this is now one page, but if I have a couple of pages, by changing some stuff here, all pages will immediately take over the same settings and uh, all pages will be updated at the same time and you will be sure that they will all have the same colors fonts uh, whatever uh, and you only have to set it up once because otherwise you have to go inside of each page and then edit all things individually and it just really really takes a lot of time and it's not necessary at all so let me show you first and foremost most of the time you have to think about certain colors and fonts you want to use and why you have to set it up here because you can always do it like this inside of the page so this is the same page but now opened up i can go here and then say font size has to be smaller or bigger so this is sometimes necessary because not all headings like h2 some will probably not be as big so you can always make an exception here but then like the font family and all this stuff you can change this here but this if you want to then update your page uh, later on you have to go back inside the page go back to this and then change it manually here if you leave this to inherit everything inherit so nothing special then you will have if you have the typography for example here the base font this is everything that your uh, that the rest of the of the team or the rest of the pages will have will import or will inherit this font so every paragraph and stuff so for example let me say i like railway for example if i click on this you will immediately see that certain things start to change if i click on this you see again this is railway dots this these are all small small dots you see by just clicking on one thing here the whole site completely changes its layout or at least the the fonts are completely uh, changed like this so i always like to first set up my font one that i think will um, and then also to make it the responsive settings you can also find here on the on this side so i like for example i like it more 16 pixels by default let me see is there one these are not normal text of course so you see it in the footer here so i can change this here to my preferred method 16 pixels for example then i can check how it looks on the tablet view and I can say maybe tablet is 16 is fine and then maybe mobile I think 15 would be better I'm just giving an example and this will be imported across the whole site so you only have to set it up uh, once and the whole site will have railway as base font regular style so not the, not the, the bold one the regular one and the size will be uh, imported as well on all screen sizes so 16 on big screen 16 on tablet and 15 on 
mobile. So each time now I start to edit a new page and I insert a block with a paragraph in it, it will automatically has the, have these settings and I don't have to worry. I just type in the text and I don't have to think about this because it's already set up here. Same thing for the heading. You can make a, uh, for example, a poppins is a family that often is used for headings. So you see this is immediately changed again. And then you can specifically do from h1 to h6. You can set up the sizes again, same thing, the tablet view. So you can change everything here as well. You can go more specific even here. Um, but these are the most important ones. And you see that now all my headings have been automatically updated to the poppins size. And if you think, hmm, for a bigger text, it's not looking all too good, then of course, go inside of the page and change it manually. But in general, you want most headings to look the same, have the same font size, have the same, um, the same size, the same weight and stuff. So better to set it up here and then don't have to worry about it anymore. Same thing for colors. You can see if I change the palette, that is sometimes these are all the same palettes. Yeah. So let me open up like the default ones and change and maybe scroll a bit down. You will see just by changing the palette, you see that I completely change the look and feel of this site and I didn't have to do anything. I just clicked on this. So this is also the awesome thing by working with the color palette and using this um, inside of your design. Just by clicking on some buttons, you can change your whole feel and look of your site without having to do any, um, yeah, anything else. And this will also be across all pages. So you now see one page that's being changed, but this will work for all pages at the same time. So again, it takes a couple of seconds and you have a completely different site. So I encourage you to also set up your colors. Think about your colors first and then set them up here. And you can make different palettes if you're doubting. And then once your site is finished, you can check the site in the three different palettes and then decide, okay, I like one the most. And you can always change later on to another one. Okay. Buttons, again, it's useful to set it up here. This is a button, for example, and you see the background colors um, and the border colors, the text colors, you can all set them up here because this will, again, each time you insert a button and you don't touch the settings, it will have these settings by default. But I don't know if I have a normal button. Uh, these are all yeah, edited already, so these don't take in but you, they take in this, uh, this is the hover color. So you see it's getting dark blue. Let me change this maybe to a whitish and see, no, the, so these buttons are not using these settings. That's because the button itself has been set up inside of the page. So probably if I go here and open up this button, yeah, so it's default and then it will be having these settings here. So if I change this to the team settings, for example, just to show you, and I click on update, publish this and also refresh. So we will see the updated button. You now see that it takes over the settings here. So let me change this to white again. So you see it immediately changes and then background color, this was the darker blue like this and that's also the nice thing every button on your whole site will look the same has the same styling has the same stuff but then you have to make sure that here you have the team settings enabled and not the default settings enabled and so these three if you start with these three it will already improve your workflow immensely and the other thing i would recommend is go inside of the page layout settings page layout and make a default uh, setting set up here so every page you start with has the same um, same settings because that also let me ch uh, show you uh, if i go about us you see this thing here i have a layout that i've set up but i forgot to change these settings so here i set them up and I normally they will all be default 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 and this will do, this means it will inherit the settings that are set up in the customizer. And by default, this is the thing that is set up. So this means show page title is by default enabled. And this is the page title. And the page title layout is with like the 
this background setting. So if I change it to this, for example, you will see that it's already looking different because it takes in takes in this and it's now inside of the content but probably behind my my uh, first setting uh, but by default you will have that this and i almost always disable this because i don't like it but in some uh, circumstances you might say that you like it you can change some stylings here you can change the height of the container um, and then you can uh, go to design and then change some stuff so by default it will again inherit what i've set up with my uh, fonts uh, just a couple of minutes ago and you can change some colors and you can also if there is a featured image but i don't think there is it will take this as a background so it could be could be used of course but i almost always leave this off so let me do that up so some settings will be gone and you see my page is already looking different and now if i go to contact it's also not having this uh, page title if i open if i leave this open again and i can go to my page again and disable this here by going to my page um, title on the top here and click on disable like i did here but then you have to do this for every page and if you forget a couple of pages and you didn't see it then you have to go back later and manually change every page again so again just a headache 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 so just do it once here and you will be good to go default page layout uh, normal is by default you also have the narrow you see this white box here this is the width of the content and you see it changes full width well yeah in the name so it's now full width by default this is normal this normal the width of this is also you can also set up here in the customizer i will show you in a minute and often I like it more unboxed, so you see now you don't have this um, box that you see here where the content will be in, but unboxed, but again, you can change this. Content vertical padding, this means, if I go back to box, so you can see there is some space between the header and the content, and also there is some space between, normally you can't really see it now, but again, the same thing for the footer and the end of the content, if you click on enable. If you do bottom only there will be no you see it sticks to the top immediately if i do top only it has some spacing here but it now will stick to the bottom so often enabling this or leaving this is a good idea um, and how can you set this up all these more specific things so same thing for single post and same thing for archives you can change this individually for these three stuff and if you have custom posts they will also be there so make sure you set this up and uh, save yourself a lot of time the other thing is by general layout and here you have the things you can change if i change this to nine uh, to 800 you see again this white box is immediately changed and this is the normal width so this is normal if i check normal it takes in this value that i've put in here so let me change this to 1100 for example and the narrow lower layout content max width is 842 pixels and this is when i check this one you see it changes immediately and it takes in the value that i've put in uh, here so often you have for normal pages this value and then for the blog posts the content inside of the blog post it's often the narrow content and you can change this here top and bottom spacing this is this setting the vertical padding that's enabled now if you enable it it will take in these settings so here you see it's enabled as well if i change this to eight you see the spacing increases if i change this to one you will see it almost sticks to the top so you can change also to pixel values ems or view h so by default it's five so you can change this here oh i clicked on the wrong one and you can do it with the slider as well then for the single posts i don't have a post open now but you can uh, change some settings like the shadow and stuff here and then for the archive the if you have like three in a row you can change like the the boxed archive settings here but this again if you set it up once every page will have the same custom content max width will have the same uh, top and bottom spacing and if you change to a narrow layout content and you uh, and you have a couple of pages that use this narrow content you will be sure that they have the same 
spacing and the same uh, width uh, also. So again, super simple to set up, but if you forget it, um, then you have a lot of problems later on. Yeah? Sidebar settings, you can say, I always want it to be 20% of the width of the page, and you can make it sticky here, and then it, every sidebar, sidebar will be automatically inherit the settings as well. For a four page layout, these are the same things you have with a with the normal page settings, so you can individually change this. So I think these are the most important ones to set up. So colors and fonts, really useful, especially if you have doubting doubts about the colors, you can immediately change the whole site by changing it here. If you use a lot of buttons and you want them all to look the same, set it up once here and then make sure you pick the theme settings here with the styles then it will be inheriting everything you've set up here and typography, typography uh, of course again if you're uh, thinking hmm, i don't really like it now that it's online you just go to here you go to here you pick a different font and your whole site you see also my menu completely changed just by changing one thing here and if you have 500 pages every page at that instant will have this font at the same time so save you a lot of time check it out if you didn't already um, and if you have any problems you can always let me know cheers see you later